Good morning, my name is Robin McKellip. I'm an undergraduate student here at Wichita State University. I study un uh, anthropology and under Dr. Donald J. Blakesley. Today I will be presenting our analysis, our, our intended analysis of Great Bend Aspect cooking vessels. Events in the Great Bend Aspect have been dif difficult to establish temporally. A large sample of radiocarbon dates from the site of Etzanoa indicate a range of 1425 Common Era to 1700 Common Era. Previous efforts to establish change through time in this range have been unsuccessful. Due to long durations of human activity and mixed deposits, in addition to contemporary differences between the three main uh, subdivisions of Great Bend, this has created additional complications. Because pottery changes more rapidly than other forms of material culture, it is necessary to form a seriation. Seriation is often used to delineate change through time when radiocarbon samples cannot be applied. As a result, this project will attempt to create the basis for a ceramic seriation. The Great Bend Aspect is an archaeological classification of sites located in McPherson County, Cowley County, Marion County, and Rice County, Kansas. These sites were first identified by Waldo Wadel during his ex excavations of two of three known village clusters. During this time, he defined those village clusters into two foci, the first being the Little River Focus, which is in McPherson and Rice County, Kansas, and the second being the Lower Walnut Focus, which is on the Kansas and Oklahoma border. These sites were identified and associated, associated by Waldo Wadel with the ancestral Wichita tribe, and then the ages were approximated. Additionally, he created a baseline for research uh, in this region. Historical evidence shows that the uh, ancestral Wichita lived in grass thatched houses. Their subsistence strategies included large game such as bison, elk, pronghorn, and deer. Additionally, their agricultural crops included maize, bean, corn, squash, sunflower, and tobacco. Their material culture also included bone tools, stone tools, and utilitarian vessels. Their settlement patterns consisted of sedentary villages and sedentary seasonal camps. A team from the Kansas State Historical Society tried to establish a ceramic sequence using uh, vessels from uh, cash pits associated with radi radiocarbon samples. These attempts were unfortunately unsuccessful, and in addition to these attempts, they also used scintillation counting, which typically yields poor results. Dating wood charcoal was also difficult because historical evidence shows that the ancestral Wichita was using uh, juniper for their houses. And as such, juniper wood typically has small rings and for dendrochronology, a larger sample is more preferred. So with this being said, the small rings are more apt to reflect the age of the tree rather than the fire itself from when that was burned. So previous work by Wichita State University has also shown um, that the, many of the pits from the site contain reverse stratigraphy. As we see on the figure on the left, we have our youngest layer at the top and the oldest layer at the bottom, which is typical for stratigraphy. However, the bell pits that we're finding at these sites have the oldest stratigraphy at the top and the youngest at the bottom, creating a, an, a range of dates that make it more difficult. So for our methods, we intend to uh, analyze complete or restored vessels. Um, these vessels will be pulled from the Coronado Quivira Museum collection located in Rice County, Kansas, the McPherson Museum collection in McPherson, Kansas, a Cowley County private collection from Arc City, Kansas, and the Kansas State Historical Society collections in Topeka, Kansas. Our analysis will include uh, applicable vessels that retain the profile, base, shoulder, and rim, this is necessary to determine uh, vessel morphology in the region and what is uh, consistent with the site itself and um, what is consistent with the communities around it. Temper types are also necessary to analyze because they show us that, um, that they are work, help uh, determine the clay types. So the clay what we deal with is a primary secondary clay. Primary clay is a primary source, whereas a secondary clay is an alluvial clay, typically, that has been uh, moved by water erosion and deposited elsewhere from its primary source. So by adding um, these, the mussel shell temper, or sand and grog, it helps create this uh, workable consistency because it lowers the plasticity in the clay by adding a, a plastic material. Analyzing these features will help determine locality and where they're sourcing their tempers. Additional stylistic choices will be an analyze for incised lines, punctate, punctate, cord wrap paddle, simple stamped, and paddle and anvil techniques. 
By reassessing the ceramic assemblage in the Great Bend aspect using complete and restored uh, vessels, seriation will help us uh, determine what is coming first and what is coming last. Because it is important to identify regional variation, a single cultural tradition, and traits and attributes depending on those cultural aspects. By doing so, we can identify these separate but contemporaneous communities and determine the locality of these pots. Challenges for this research included um, unforeseen circumstances. We anticipated being able to complete um, our research project, but however, with these circumstances, we do intend to continue going forward. The, break, the Great Bend aspect currently ranges from 1425 Common Era to 1700 Common Era. This is more than enough time for ceramic change to have occurred. Based on measurable, measurable ceramic change, we will be able to use seriation uh, focusing on shape, style, um, iconography, and manufacturing. These features will be useful since radiocarbon dates cannot be applied. Thank you. And questions? So I expect to find different, like similarities in the uh, Lower Walnut and Little River focus will show vessel morphology will be consistent likely. Um, difference was, will tell us regionality, such as like uh, whether they have flat or rounded bases and what temper types they're using, and then as well as the clays they're pulling for their, uh, for their vessels. Pottery from the Great Bend aspect differs in terms of wall thickness and then stylistic choices. As we see with archaic vessels, they tend to be thicker in their vessel wall. And then as well as the temper types can tend to be different and stylistic choices, such as focusing on the rim, the profile of the body itself, the neck, uh, shoulders, and then the base. Uh, yes, so when uh, determining morphology, we will start by taking photographs of the vessels themselves, but we will also take measurements at specific locations. And by doing so, we can create a, a statistic graph to help us determine what the range is and then what's falling in consistency. But by determining things such as like stylistic, like nodes on handles or on the rims, this will help us determine locality. Um, with the uh, methods itself, it helps us form a seriation with identifying these specific cultural features and then the regional traits and then the overall cultural identification itself. <laughs>